The females slowly make their way from the coastal terraces down to the shoreline, carrying the hopes of all red crabs with them. As they travel, their movements are made more cumbersome by their precious loads. They move with purpose and resolve. They have an appointment with the moon. Their eggs will only be released to the ocean at a particular confluence of moon and tide. Within the undergrowth, a predator waits. A robber crab is on the hunt. It easily overcomes its prey and helps itself to a protein-rich dinner made more nourishing with lashings of caviar. All around Christmas Island, the red heart beats to the same rhythm as the females move to the sea. The heart does not beat as strongly as in the past because of crazy ants, but the survivors are about to play their part in determining the island's future. Most females make it to the safety of the shore where they dip washing the mud of the burrows off their shells. But their eggs are not released. It is not yet time. From Greta Beach to the blowholes and all around the island, the females continue to arrive. But there are extensive areas where the cliffs are not splashed with red. More evidence of the huge devastation being caused by the ants. Even though the ants have been on the island for 50 years, they've only recently begun to impact heavily on crab numbers. How much longer can the crab sustain such heavy losses? This year, there are far fewer females coming to spawn than ever before. As recently as two years ago, the gathering females looked like this. Practically the entire coast was painted red with life. Max has been monitoring the migrations for years. This is one of the smallest gatherings he's ever seen. And he's most concerned for the crab's survival. There's never been a time when the female's role was more critical. And tonight is the time when they must play their part. As the day lengthens, the female crabs wait. Tonight is the night of the neat tide, the smallest difference between high and low.
The last quarter of a waning moon rises. Its light is the signal the females have been waiting for. As each female reaches the water, it's as if she's raising her limbs in an ecstatic dance of life as she offers her eggs to the ocean. Soon the sea is saturated with spawn, countless millions of tiny lives whose battle for survival begins from the moment they leave their mother's protection. As soon as the eggs are released, they hatch, and masses of larvae or megalopay swarm the shallows. The crab larvae are like miniature mythical beasts with tiny spikes on their heads, which they use to rip open their egg sacs. and their powerful tails propel them into the next stage of life. The crab larvae will go through several life stages before they come back to the land. During that time, they will be at the mercy of fish, ocean currents, and the weather. Only when the survivors return to land in three or four weeks will the success of the spawning be known. Their eggs released, the female crabs begin to move out of the water and across the beach. The sun rises upon females with their brood pouches now empty, beginning the long march back to the forest plateau. Among them are a few females who haven't released their eggs. They will spawn over the next few nights. Some of the crabs dip in the ocean one last time before returning to the forest for another year. The purpose of their journey fulfilled, the females move more easily now. It's been a month since they began their migrations. 